I'm going to read out of 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9 and 10, and then I'm going to pray for us. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother had named him Jabez, saying, I gave birth to him in pain. I cried out to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And God granted his request. Hey, let's pray. God, we thank you for just the ability to come here to summit as a team and as a community. And God, we really do pray that we would be just giving you worthy attention. God, we know you're worthy of our praise. And we come up short in so many ways. But God, I just pray now for John as he comes up and brings the word. Lord, that you would just fill him with your Holy Spirit message that our team needs to hear, but also everyone in this room needs to hear. God, we thank you that we live in a, in a place that we can congregate together freely and worship you. And God, I pray, Lord, that you would be like this prayer, that you would enlarge your territory, and that you would bless the folks in this room. Because there's a lot of people, God, in pain, don't know what they came in here with today. It might be a physical injury. It might be something going on in their life. But we're all carrying something, God. I pray that we would just put that at your feet and listen and act, Lord, in an honoring way to you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I love you, brother. I love you, too. I love you. <laughs> Thank you. The great man of God, some of you already know this, but he was a deacon here at Summit. Hey, I love all of y'all. I even taught some of y'all in class, and y'all were so kind to me. I just want to tell you, thank you. God has a plan for everybody in this room. That is why you have these scriptures today. Let's look at it and what God is saying. If you want to look at the main idea, it's going to be posted up here. I want you to see the main idea. The whole point that we're going today is being limited by pain will never stop God's reign. I'll say it again. Being limited by pain will never stop God's reign. I want you to think about this because God has a calling. Some of you are just here because you got to be here. Some of you are here because your parents told you to be here. Some of you are here because, well, that's the thing to do. But I want you to know that two verses can change your life because of Jesus. I have been so moved by this scripture. If you think about it, don't live in our limitations, but live for God and his exaltation. I remember when the Holy Spirit gave that to me this week. I remember the, the expositor of Bible commentary says, Jabez's prayer of faith became an occasion of grace so that God kept and blessed him rather than causing me pain. We pray in faith because God's grace and his name is Jesus. Let's look there at verse 9. Jabez, you see this name, scholars don't know, but his name might be pain. In other words, the whole point of today is don't look at your past except by your salvation of Jesus. Don't let your past rule you. As we know as Christian believers, we deal with people a lot of time because their past reigns. But I want to tell you today, stop living in the past because Jesus already knows it. Jesus already knows what you're going to do today, and he already knows what you're going to do in the future because he is the way, the truth, and what else? The life. 
God brought every one of you here, not just for football. You could have gone to other schools, but you chose, a, God led you to a Christian school. Why? Because your win opens the door to be heard. Your ability to play tough against other schools earns the right to be heard. Christians in this room know that, don't we? you got to earn the right to be heard because the world is not reading the Bible. They're just reading you who read the Bible. And so they're coming to you saying, well, what you going to do about this? And what we're going to do is we're going to live in the power of the Holy Spirit. We're not going to live in what the world gives us. We're going to live in the one who worships and greater than what the world will give you. His name is Jesus. I just want to do a lap, but I can't. Because, you know, overweight people have a purpose, too. Some of y'all know that when I was a football coach here for eight years and eight months, I had no idea I was going to be a pastor. I had no idea that I was going to be doing this. But I want you to know that God has a purpose and plan in your life if you'll submit to it. Now, I'll tell you what, Satan going to fight you. He's going to fight this place because he's not going to fight places that don't care about him. If they don't care about Jesus, then he ain't going to fight them because he is already, he got it. But if you stand for Jesus, guess what, saints? Somebody going to come against you. And the Bible says our struggle is not against flesh and blood. So it's not against human beings. But the world wants to fight against human beings. But there is somebody trying to mess up people over your life. And that is demons ruled by Satan. But here's the thing about Satan. Satan was created. He was never a God because there's only one God and his name is Jesus. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. Blows me away when they say that. His mother had named him Jabez or Jabez in Hebrew. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel. Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And what does the scripture say at the end of verse 10? And God what? Granted his request. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you to just agree exactly what Coach Cardinia said. We come to agree what the power of the cross has done. We come to agree of what Jesus did, living the perfect life we could not live, dying on the cross for our sins, for everybody at one time because he is God, he is the Lord. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. And he died on the cross for our sins so that, and rose on the third day, the first day of the week, early in the morning to show that it was a new day, a new way, a new truth, a new life. His name is Jesus. And so, God, we come to you to worship you. We don't, I don't want to come with wise and persuasive words, but I do want to come with the spirit and the power so that everybody here, that they will not rest on human wisdom, but on the spirit power. We love you, Lord. We ask for forgiveness for our sins. Why? Because you've already, for us who are saved, you've already forgiven us of our sins, past, present, and future. But we acknowledge our sins because we're now saints who are following Jesus and anything that's trying to hold us back is trying to hold us down. But the one thing I know about you, there's a resurrection shows there's nobody that can hold us down because we always look up. We praise you. We adore you. And we ask this in the name of Jesus and we all said what? Main idea, main point. Here we go. Being limited by pain will never stop God's reign. I, I don't want to hear about this pain. So when we get ready to pray here, in a little bit, we're going to ask every one of you, and you're going to be like, no, nah, I, don't, I don't roll like that. You know what I'm saying, John? Well, I'm going to ask you something. Are you going to let somebody rule you or are you going to let Jesus rule you? Which one do you want? Because other people will mess you up, but God will never mess up. And we are going to pray and we're going to pray. There's some things happening in everybody's life in this room. And you know what I'm talking about. And we're going to pray. And we're going to get on our knees. And we're going to pray 
that Jesus will make a way when there is no way because he is the way, the truth, and the life. And God has you for a reason. God has you for a purpose. And this is, if he would do it for Jabez, he would do it for you because God is no respecter of persons. I want you to think about that reign, what that really means, and God's reign in that whole point being limited by pain will never stop God's reign. It really means the, the royal authority. God is the authority over every one of us. Je Jabez, this, his earthly name will never limit God's name. Look at that word, Jabez. It, it, it's the root there. It means to grieve. I'm not saying, I don't know what was going on. That's all we got. If you look at that whole chapter, it says so-and-so about so-and-so about so-and-so about so-and-so. And all in verse 9, these two verses, boom. All of a sudden, we read about God stepping in for somebody. And then they go back to the name, to the name, to a name, to a name. You get a practice, you get to do what you got to do. You go to your work, you go to do the same rhythm every day. Same rhythm, same rhythm, same rhythm. But God steps in. And he will do it for you. And God laid these words on my, the scripture on my heart before I even knew that they would be here. Look what it says. The root there means to grieve. He didn't even have a cool name. He had a name that nobody cared. His mama was like, oh, when I think about you, I think about all the pain when I had you. It wasn't like his mama was like, that's my baby. No, nah, she wasn't rolling like that. If you look at that, his, and, and others, uh, think about this pain. His name would remind Jabez and others of the mom's pain. Warren Wiersbe talks about that. Another part says this, but following an ancient belief that the name represented the character. So his name, some people believe that his name, you know, thought about represented his character. He was, he was nothing, but he was a pain. We grew up, we'd say pain in the neck. You know what I'm talking about? It just this is I did that's what his name meant to people. There was a I mean this few that they were afraid, this fear that evil was consistent, or his this idea that might follow this man. That this name of pain, some people thought, and you can look at this in the New American Commentary, that sometimes it, this name, when he would come in, it was like, no, nah, man, that dude's, that dude's evil. No, nah, no, nah, we ain't going with him. No, nah, I, I can't go with evil. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel to turn away possibly disaster into blessing. That commentary says, so maybe God has taken what is a disaster, he gives a blessing. God granted the request and responded to an earnest prayer. And that's why we're going to pray today, because God responds to an earnest prayer. The power of God, this, this, this writer said, can overcome the liabilities of the past and present. So Jabez, this, this name, and even Warren Wisby talks about, overcame his name and his family problems by turning to God, and that's what our prayer today is. We will turn to God because remember the point of the scripture. Remember the point where we're talking about, the main idea there, being limited by pain will never stop God's name because God is the Lord over all. And we see this, who am I that a king would die for me? I remember hearing that when I was young. Who am I that a king would die for me? And I, and I think about that, and I think about this, and, and you see in Revelation chapter 19, Verse 16, Revelation chapter 19, verse 16 says this, on his robe and on his thigh, he has this name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. It's about Jesus. It's about Jesus coming back. And here it is, he is the King of Kings. He is over anybody that's a king. He is over, he's the Lord over all lords. He is the person that came uh, fully God and fully man to give us life. 
It even celebrated in Revelation chapter 5, verses 5 and 6, says this, and maybe you'll pray this. Maybe God will use you this in prayer. The one of the elders said to me, do not weep. See the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. Now here we see Jesus as the lion, and in verse 6 we see, then I saw a lamb. When we're saved, we see Jesus as the lamb, right? We know that he's the lion, but we see him as a lamb because the lamb comes because we're right with him. Jesus is not coming to hammer us because he has saved us and we're now disciples. Now pray that over every one of us, looking as if it had been slain, standing at the center of the throne, encircled by the four living creatures and the elders, the lamp had seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. In other words, Jesus is the Lord over all. And the Holy Spirit is in Christians and also shows what God is doing. What is this in this idea in, in verse 9 of First Chronicles chapter 4? Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. What does honorable mean? It has really a contextual definition. It means burdensome, but also respected. In this context, he is respected. He doesn't bring anything to the table, but what does he do? He goes to Jesus, who's the Lord over the table, doesn't he? And he looks to Jesus, and guess what happens? Jesus then does it all. And look what it says there. He is more honorable. How is he more honorable? Are his brothers godly? Look what it says there in the verse. His mother had named him Jabez, saying, I gave birth to him in pain. Her mother, his mother, thinks about him, and she thinks about the pain. She doesn't think about the future. She doesn't think about the calling of God. She thinks about, that's what I went through because he was born. But look what it says in verse 10. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel. He cries out because God is the one who can answer it. So how is he more honorable? Warren Wiersbe said, it would seem from the text that his brethren rejected him and were not noble men of character. So even the relatives, even his family was not walking with Jesus compared to one person in research. God is greater than earthly pain. That's what the Holy Spirit was showing me, and I pray that God will show you today that whatever you're going through, and, and you know, the people that work out in this room, the people that study in this room, the people that have gone through a lot in this room, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Just because you go through something hard, you're, you're looking for the eternal reward, right? You're looking for the win. You're looking for the degree. You're looking for the person you're going to marry. You're looking for the end. Is that correct? But God has something bigger than just a worldly God has something bigger. Psalm 21.1, when Jesus was dying on the cross for us, this is really what he could say because obviously his, his oxygen was taken away. He was struggling. He says this, my God, my God, why have you what? Now, when you just read that, you think, is that it? Is that it? Is he, is he, he's fully man at that point. And he's like, God, why, why are you letting me go on this cross? Like, what's up with that? But he's the one who said he would do it before he was ever seen in this world. But he's quoting the whole context of that, of that whole chapter. But he can't say it. That's what most scholars believe. Look what he says in verse 27. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord. That's verse 27, and we just quoted verse 1 that says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Forsaken means leave me. Why'd you leave me? But then he knows, he knows that whole chapter because he knows it all. And all the ends of the earth in verse 27 will remember and turn to the Lord 
and all the families of the nations will bow down before him. Well, I have some questions on this. It's in scripture, we call it an argumentation, but I just want you to know what it is. It says, how do we overcome someone or something that holds us back? Has anybody in here been held back? Okay, that means nobody. Well, I'll raise my hand. I have. I have been held back. Listen, I held myself back. I held myself back. When I'm there as a football coach here and God's calling me into ministry, I had no idea that we'd be in this situation. I had no idea that I'd be preaching and, and instead of coaching the athletes, I'm, I'm pastoring the athletes. You don't know what I'm saying? Everything changes. Have you been told you are not good enough? I know I felt that going into ministry. You ever felt that? I'm, Jesus, I'm not good enough. I'm never good enough. I told y'all this, and being repetitive because y'all are here, but I remember when I was in seminary, getting my master's in divinity, and I'm sitting there in seminary, I go to the president of, this, of the seminary, and I said, hey, listen, here's my past. Here's the things I've done. I, I don't think I could be a pastor. True story. You can ask my wife, Lynette. She's down there with the children. You can ask her. I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. But here's what I know about Jesus. He doesn't call the ones who are good enough because he's the one who says you're good. I'll go over here. He doesn't, he doesn't want us to think, are we good enough? Because then we're going to think that we're the ones who did it. But he's the one who did it. And everybody in here, I want you to know, you are good enough because it's not you, it's Jesus. And God called you here. And you say, you God, God called me here to win? God called you here to show Jesus Christ. And that's why you're here. Because it's more than a win. All the world can do is show you a win, right? Is that all the world can do? All the world can do is say, you're a winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. That was kind of funny. But God has something bigger for your life. I never knew when I came here as a coach that God would call me as a pastor. Never knew it. I don't have any historical data. I don't have any family relatives that do that. God has bigger plans for you than the plans you have for you. So that's talking. How did Jabez overcome pain? I mean, that pain word means to travail. How is the only one who can answer the prayer request? Who is the only one? It's not me. It's not you. It's Jesus. Jesus knows we need hope. Verse 10 says this, and we read it. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel. What does it mean to cry it out? He's proclaiming, you're the God. In fact, that word there, cried out, is also in Genesis chapter 1, verse 5. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. It is a here it is, Jabez crying out. It's the same word used in Genesis chapter 1. 1 verse 5, and it's there that God called, and God is calling you today. Everybody in this room, God is calling you, and we're going we're gonna to be prayer warriors for Jesus Christ. Because when you enter in with Jesus, you know, and everybody in here is a Christian, you know that the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Doesn't what Scripture say that? It's going to be your key is prayer and walking with Jesus. You want your life to work? You want your family to work? You want your steps to work? You want your relationship to work? And the list goes on and on. Little, you know what I'm saying? Earth, wind, and fire never hurt nobody. Look what he says there. He cried out to the God of Israel, Elohim. That, that word Elohim there in the Greek literally means it, it has the whole, the whole there of, of the, the spirit realm. But it's specifically for Jesus. It's for Yahweh. It's for Yahweh, the God. Specifically, he's not talking about angels. He's not talking about all that spiritual realm. He's talking about God. He's talking about Yahweh. He says this in the prayer. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, to Yahweh, to God our Father. What does he say there in the next part? He says, Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, oh, that you would what? I didn't hear you. Oh, that you would what? I'm praying a blessing. 
I'm praying that God will bless you, not so you can be seen, but so that he can be seen. Are you willing to pray for whatever you're facing today? Are you willing to pray? It has been on my heart. It has been this idea. We have got to pray. God is calling us to pray in the name of Jesus. You say, but John, I'm not worthy to pray. Is anybody worthy to pray? To pray? Is, is it us that matter that we're praying? Or is it the one we're praying to that matters? I'm, listen, everybody in this room, love and respect you, but I just want you to know, it is not how popular and righteous you are that gives you, you get to pray. It is Jesus Christ. Anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Isn't that what scripture says? It's not because God, I'm living a good life. I'm trying to do what's right. I'm giving my money, helping the poor. I'm trying to do all these things. That is not what saves you. It is Jesus Christ. And we need to pray for one another. Pray for righteous men availeth much. We've got to pray for one another. And what did he do? He knew that his name, people looked at him, that he was a pain. But God didn't label him as a pain. God is the one who listened his prayer because he was turning to God. He was not turning to himself. Oh, I'll get it right. I'll do it right. I'll make it right. No, you won't. If you're going to follow Jesus, it is only Jesus who could do it. It is not us. It is not how righteous we can be. It's the one who gave us righteous. His name is Jesus. And God is calling everybody in this room. He's calling us. If you don't know Jesus, then turn to him. Surrender your life to him. People say, well, I I'll get it right. I'm a good person. No, we're not. No, the Bible says this, and quote me on it. No one is good but God alone. No one is good. But it's only Jesus. And everybody in this room, I pray that you'll turn to Jesus. And if you're a Christian in this room, who are you praying for? Who are you praying for? with because you're praying to Jesus and that is my prayer today that you will turn to Jesus and look what he says David has cried out to to the God of Israel oh that you would what bless me it's a verb to bless we need you I don't bring anything to the table you got to you got to help us God you got to do it Enlarge my territory. Oh, that you have blessed me and enlarge my territory. You're the only one, God, who can take over the, the great challenge that we have because you're great. Look what he says to the God of Israel. Oh, that you have blessed me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me. That means you're in a relationship with Jesus. And keep me from harm. That literally means from evil. To keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. I thought about this, trying to listen to the Holy Spirit. Let me make it quick, and I want to show you a song that some of you we've already showed here a couple months ago. You already know the song. Some of you might even know this song, but I'm going to tell you, it's a song that, that God has used to impact my life, face at any challenge, because I know that God is the one who answers anything and everything. Two weeks from today, two weeks from today, I have to go down, and I give glory to the Lord. Two weeks from today, I have to go down to this place down in Charleston, and I got to speak to uh, people who have brain cancer. Me? The doctor who did my surgery asked me, and I'm speaking to them, and you know, because y'all know me, I'm not going to... I'm not just going to say, hey, the doctor did a good job in the surgery. Y'all know what I'm going to do. I'm going to do the one who was over the doctor and the good job doing the surgery, and his name is Jesus. And y'all know because y'all prayed for him right here before, two days before I had that surgery. God has a plan for your life. And here I am. I'm not even going to tell you some of the people that are there, but mm, mm, some people got some cash. Some people come from... You know what I'm saying? They live in a nice place, got some nice stuff. But they want to talk to me? It's because they want to talk to Jesus. And we're going to show Jesus. And that is why you're in this room. That is why now I pray that God blesses you. I don't bless you for you. 
I mean, yeah, but I'll bless you for God because you're going to be showing him and the power of the Holy Spirit. Everybody in this room, the power of the Holy Spirit. You say, well, I don't know this. I don't know that. Yes, I want to tell you something. It's not what you know. It's who you know. Look, look at this. I'm just going to turn to the Gospel of John. We're getting ready to, we're getting ready to do something. Here we go. The Gospel of John, chapter 1135. This was, these are verses that meant a lot to me in a, in a dark place in my life. And it was, it was uh, I had that surgery. Uh, it'll be three years ago, two weeks from yesterday. And in the Gospel of John, chapter 11, his cousin died. Jesus' cousin died, and Jesus knew it. But Jesus was going to show that God resurrects the dead. In other words, whatever you're facing, God resurrects. Um, oh, I got, to, I, got, I got to book through it. Here we go. Uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 11, verse 35 says this. I want you to know what verse 35 says. Uh, anybody in, right now in this room, you can memorize this verse. You ready? Anybody ready? Ready to memorize it? Jesus wept. That's the verse. Why did Jesus, why did Jesus cry? Look at verse 4. He knew this about his cousin. He knew that his cousin is going to die and died. Verse 4 says, when he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in what? Listen, I don't, your record does not define you. Your past does not define you. This man dies, but Jesus knows he was going to be resurrected because death doesn't stop. Losses don't stop. Past doesn't stop you or define you. The sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory so that God's son may be glorified through him. And God's son is Jesus. Look at, look at verses 12 through 25. Verses, uh, excuse me, um, in chapter 11, verses 23 through 25. Jesus said to her, this is talking about a cousin, she's, she's broken because her brother has died. But Jesus knew just what happened is at the end. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. In other words, his death is not his final. Jesus is the one who determines your final. Let me put it in your turn. Your, your scores, wins or losses in the middle of the season, doesn't define your end season. It doesn't define your final season. Don't you play that game with Jesus? All of us in this room, where you are now doesn't define you. Jesus defines you. You say, but John, you don't know what I've gone through. You're right, but I know the one who'll see you through. Ooh, that was good. Verse 24, Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last days. Jesus said to him, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. Even it looks terrible. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Verses 40 and then 43 through 44. I want to show a video. Verse 40. Then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? Verses 43 uh, through 44 says this, when he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth, because he's dead. He's already buried in the tomb. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Look what it says in 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 10. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And God granted his request. 
It was a song that meant a lot to me. Some of y'all already heard it. I know I'm replaying it because I played it a couple months ago. But I'm really playing it so that y'all will see it. I want you to know God is the one who makes a way when there is no way because the main point of all this is, and I pray, being limited by pain will never stop God's reign. I know it. Let's check this out as you see what God does. This What has God got to turn around for you? Notice in these verses, we don't see and know what happened to Jabez, except that God answered his prayer. Because the glory was not what Jabez got to get. But Jabez was not glorified because he got something good. The glorification was in Jesus because he's the one who gave it. Can I get a witness? Do you need prayer? There's leaders right here. There's leaders right here to pray. Do you, hit, do you want to intercede for anybody? Now's the time to pray. Don't just be sitting there. I don't know what will people think. Does it matter what people think or does it matter what he thinks? And his name is Jesus. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, Oh, that you will bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And God granted his request. What is your request? glorify the Lord. We don't read what Jabez got, but we do know who the one that Jabez prayed to. Let's fill this place up. Intercede for people. Love with people. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now for you to be glorified and magnified. I pray, God, for people right now, they can come right in the middle of the prayer and kneel down, interceding for somebody. Maybe they want to intercede for their teammates. Maybe they want to intercede for their coaches. Maybe they want to intercede for people in the class. Maybe they want to intercede for their family. Maybe they got prayer requests right now, that they'll come right now in the name of Jesus. God, you called us to be the church. Who in here needs prayer? Maybe they need a prayer over something. I don't know what it is, Lord. 
who needs prayer, they'll come right now. They'll, they'll quit living in what will people think and they'll start living for the one who does think. His name is Jesus. Oh God, have mercy on us. Fill this place with the baptism of the Holy Spirit that we got saved in salvation. Fill us, Lord. God, praying for their teammates, praying for their family, praying for healing, praying for the love that's absent around them. Oh God, what is their need? What is the need? God, we need you. I don't have any answers. But I do have the one who follows. The one who has all the answers. And the one who has all the answers, his name is Jesus. God, we have a lot of people to pray for right now. God, we cry out to you during these songs. That our worship leaders are going to be singing. Oh God, this is our prayer. To the God of Israel, oh that you'll bless us and enlarge our territories. Let your hand be with us and keep us from harm so that we will be free from pain. Who in here has got pain? Who in here knows somebody's got pain? We gotta intercede. Oh God, bless them. Bless this football team. Right now in the name of Jesus, there's battles they're gonna go through, but they're looking to the one who'll see them through. His name is Jesus. There's people in this room that have parents that need help, they have friends that need help. They have children that need help. And we are seeing, Lord, I pray for this church, that we'll be a church that's not a church that just looks fancy, that has just the best of everything. Lord, that we'll be a church who lifts up the one who knows everything. His name is Jesus. I humble myself in front of you, God. In the name of Jesus, bless us and enlarge our territory. Let your hand be with us and keep us from harm so that we'll be free from pain. If there's anybody in this room, and right now they know they feel it, but they don't want to act on it because they're scared. Right now they'll surrender their life to Jesus. They'll come forward and grab one of our leaders. And right now in the name of Jesus, and surrender their life to Jesus. Jesus, I'm a sinner, and I can't get it right. But you are the Savior, you're the only one, and I know I'm feeling it. But Lord, my emotions are trying to rule over it, but I'm feeling it. I need to surrender my life to you. Lord, will they just pray, Jesus, save me. I am a sinner, and you're the answer. And I give my life to you right now. In Jesus' name, I pray they'll come forward and tell us. God, we pray. We're not going to sit down. We're going to pray. 